Welcome to the Tanya Hoffman's fabulous TV show. I am your host, Tanya Hoffman. And of course, as always, I have an amazingly fabulous guest star today. It's Manette Rarden. Hi, Manette. Hi, so happy to be here. Happy New Year. Manette and I have been friends forever, and you're going to adore her as much as I do. So before we get started, I wanted to remind you that we, too, want you to go out and change the world from the front of the room and really help people all over this amazing planet of ours. So go to check it out, Public Speakers with an S, Association, all spelled out, dot com, and take advantage of all the stuff that we offer there to help you get your message heard. And also, if you just were like, well, I don't know what to do, and is this a fit? Right down at the bottom, there's a chat with me opportunity. So just click on that and pick a time that works for you. All right, let's get over back to Manette. So Manette, so tell me, what do you have fabulous going on in your life right now? Wow, it seems like so much fabulous is going on right now. So what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is I get to listen to people's business dreams. I one of the many things I do is I host a meetup here in beautiful Santa Barbara where I live and there were a whole bunch of new ladies there last night. And Tanya, I know you see this with speaking too, but there's something so magical about hearing people voice and articulate what it is they want to create and how it is they want to change the world, whether it's from the front of the room, the back of the room, over the phone or whatever, hearing just um, the, the depth of creativity that people bring to entrepreneurship is like the greatest joy in my life. Right. I know you, you start seeing like these blossoming moments, right? Where someone is like, oh, I've got this idea and I want to do this and this. And there's like this bubbling effect that they're so excited. And then you meet somebody else and that light has been snuffed, right? And this is the way most entrepreneurs, <laughs> there's like one or the other, people that are really excited or people are like, okay, I'm just trying to make it work. Um, do you find that as well when you talk? To yeah, people? absolutely. And especially by the time you hit the five-year mark and the 10-year mark, or maybe even the, the 15 years, and you're still just kind of going along, but you really don't have a lot to show for it, right? So you're not making a lot of profit. There's not a le lot left over. And basically what you've done is made a job for yourself rather than really stepped into true entrepreneurship and business leadership. And it's a sticky place to decide. I had a conversation with a client this morning who has a creative design and branding agency. And she's like, I think I'm experiencing burnout. I've been doing this for a decade. I don't really have a clear vision for what I want next. And so it, to me, always comes back to, one, what was the dream in the beginning? How has that dream changed? But really looking at why do you do what you do? Like what gets you out of bed in the morning? Because building business is flipping hard, right? There are days when it's painful and tedious and boring and not exciting, right? And there's parts of our business that we don't want to do, especially if we're the ones who are wearing all the many, many hats in our business, right? Mm -hmm. But when we're really connected to this beautiful vision of how we want the world to be different because of the work we do, it's so motivational and sometimes, you know, it's like Simon Sinek, start with why. Why do you do what you do? Maybe it's because you want to have a location independent lifestyle. Maybe it's because you want to put your kids through college. Um, I spoke to a lady yesterday. She has 11 grandkids and uh, one on the way, so 12 grandkids. And she and her husband are committed to taking their whole family, all their kids and all the grandkids on these amazing, fabulous trips every year. That's a beautiful why. Connection and family is what's important for some people's financial freedom for others. It's world peace or Changing the climate or saving the environment, but what what gets you out of bed in the morning? I know you see a lot of times that people settle Right. They are like, okay, well, I can't figure out what to do. So I think I'll be an insurance agent. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no why there. There's just a uh, I just felt like I had to pick something. And um, a lot of times they just don't even see the real value in themselves and their own voice and what they've already know and have experienced and how to bring that to fruition 
where people will want to buy it, right? Because that's really what entrepreneurism really is. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's so funny because uh, at my meetup last night, I talked about how there's five essential questions that you have to answer in order to build a profitable business. One was how much money do you want to make, right? People often think about what they want to create and forget about the money piece. So I love to reverse engineer the entire business planning process and start with money first. But the second question I ask is why you? Like, what is your brilliance? And I love what you said. I think when we're starting a business, we tend to forget how smart we are because building a business is hard and there's so much to learn, but it doesn't in any way discount your brilliance and all the things you've learned before. And when you fully integrate all of your gifts and talents from everything that you've done into the business you're building today, why wouldn't people want to work with you, right? And then the big why is one of those. And you and I have had this conversation in the last decade so many times, but you have to know who are the people who are going to buy what you're selling and, and how are you helping them? What are the problems that you're solving? Because if you don't know who it's for, I don't care how much you want to save the world, you can't save everybody, right? And so really um, zeroing in on who is that one perfect person. If you had one, two, five, ten, or a million of those, right, in your business, that everything would be perfect. And I think that we tend as entrepreneurs to think that we can save the world. And yeah. one person at a time. Right. I know. I was just talking to a lady yesterday and people get myths about themselves, right? Her myth is she's horrible with technology, but yet she was working Zoom just fine. She was working it and doing the things that she needed. And then they had one little hiccup. Oh, see, I, I, I can't work technology. I'm like, you've been working it this whole time. So stop thinking things like that. <laughs> Yeah, it's so true, those stories we tell ourselves. And, uh, you know, it's funny you bring up the technology concept because we have a number of older women in our programs and they get instant fear when they don't know how to do something. But I'm 53. I can learn technology. If I can learn technology, so can just about anybody else, right? And I think it's, um, it's so true about the myths we tell ourselves, the stories we tell ourselves, but also remembering that as long as we're learning new stuff, we're still super viable, right? It, to me, brings vitality in our life to be conquering the generation that grew up with it. But just because we didn't grow up with it doesn't mean we can't figure it out. Exactly. And I think, too, when you start really looking at the opportunity, so when you figure out something, share it. There's somebody yeah. else going to go, it's going, Oh, how do I do this? Or you could actually charge for it because you took time out of your time, right? You actually spent time that's valuable. And so now you're just saving someone else that same amount of time or more, um, by gifting them the opportunity to learn what you just learned. So there's so many ways that we can create this momentum. It's so true. And I love that whole concept of story that came up a lot in our conversations last night around really understanding what it is that your unique brilliance is and what your gifts and talents are. So much of it is from the things that you've learned in your life. But most of the time, it's who you've been throughout your life, right? It's the thing that since you were five years old, people have said, oh my gosh, you're so good at. And I love what you were saying because oftentimes it's the thing that's really effortless for us and we don't make a big deal out of it, right? So learning how to use Zoom was pretty effortless for me and it never occurred to me that it's not effortless for everybody, right? It seems very logical and obvious to me, but it's not to everyone else. And I see this with my clients, the things that they think are really easy are oftentimes hard for someone else. And the best Money, programs, content, teaching, education, and sometimes even speaking flows usually directly from what's effortless for you, not what's hard for you. Yeah, exactly. I know. And a lot of times we forget that we were them at one point you know, yes. and moving ourselves through and learning. And all of a sudden, we forget how hard it was at the beginning. You know, I remember last night, a lady was like, oh, you, you just are so effortless at video. And, you know, you just know how to do it. I'm like, yeah, but the first video I did, I was like, hello, I am <laughs> welcome to my show. I mean, it was horrible. So, but yet you just do and you keep doing and, and boom, you know, things happen for you. 
Yeah, it's so true. It's like pushing the button for the first time on your first Facebook Live <laughs> and, you know, not knowing what's happening and you're like staring at the screen and waiting. Is anybody going to watch or so just all of these things. There's a first for everything, right? I mean, there's a first step, right? There's the first time you go to school by yourself. I mean, all those firsts continue. And I think if we can look at those first time to do anything as an amazing opportunity to just get consistently better. I've been thinking a lot this week about, this is my 17th year as a business owner, right? And 17 years is it's a long time and I've made a lot of crazy mistakes along the way. I've grown a lot. But one of my biggest ahas about being in business over the last couple of years, it's a journey of personal transformation to own your own business. There are practical skills and lots of actions you have to take and money things to think about and planning that needs to be done. But underneath all of that is our mindset, the stories we tell ourselves. And I have grown so much as a woman, as a mom, as a wife, and as a business owner, all at the same time, sometimes um, <laughs> in very hilarious and painful ways. Right? Sometimes in very public ways, sometimes in very private ways, but it is definitely a journey of personal transformation. I think if you just acknowledge that it's going to require you to grow uh, emotionally, to grow in confidence, as well as to grow in skills, you'll actually be a little bit more prepared for the journey. I love it. I love it. Yeah, you know, because I've been in business since I was 25. So this month it makes 25 years. And that's awesome. Right? Such a big celebration. It's like huge. And you start looking back and I just remember that the moment because I had bought a retail store from I was a manager and the people were trying to sell it. And I looked at a little 25 year old like, fresh bait, you know, <laughs> like, yay, I went to the store owner, and, you know, I remember them handing my husband and me the keys, and they're like, okay, thanks, and we're like, uh, well, what do we do now, <laughs> you know, I mean, we had 25-year-old, two kids trying to figure out how to run a retail store, <laughs> When do we buy it? What do we buy? How do we buy it? I have no idea. And we didn't even think about asking those questions or even putting into our agreement that they had to teach us some things. So sometimes yeah, I, I, I love that about, because um, it's something I realized too. I didn't want to, so when I started my business, I wasn't, I wasn't quite 25, right? But I was maybe 35. So you think I'd have a little more wisdom, but I had been a school teacher and had sold jewelry at Claire's and had done a lot of babysitting. I'd never own a business and I didn't know what questions to ask. I think the biggest gift that I personally received in all the coaching and mentoring I've received in the last 17 years is I know what questions to ask to get me going faster. But wow, if somebody had just said, Manette, these are the five most important things you need to think about on a day-to-day -day basis in your business, everything would have been so different. And I have no regrets about my journey. Um, right. I learned so much, right? And I'm, I'm very much a self-taught entrepreneur. But at the end of the day, being willing to ask questions. And I think it's that feeling that we all get, no matter how old we are, that sort of spinning like the hamster on the wheel. Yeah because we don't even know what questions to ask. So I think sometimes just learning what are the most important questions to ask about your business can be a really powerful tool to get you to the next level. Yeah, and not to be embarrassed that you don't know the answer. Because I remember in my retail store and Michael and I were, you know, we're at that point, it was like three or four years into it. And we really still were trying to figure out what to do. And my dad, who's been in business forever and ever, walked in and he was kind of looking around and he goes, so what does your P&L look like? And we we're like, good. I mean, we didn't know what P&L was. <laughs> <laughs> but I was so embarrassed to admit to my dad that I didn't know what a P&L was, you know. And back then, we didn't even have the internet to go, you know, like, look for it real quick. <laughs> right, yeah. Everything was done manually, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you even have a budget in those days? or? Uh, you know, we had a... a perceived one for the holidays for Christmas, you know, and kind of one that we would kind of keep, you know, every month, you know, yeah. so depending on how much we sell, we would bring in, you know, that kind of thing. But man, and we did a million dollars a year, but in retail, that means usually you're making about 5%, maybe up to 7%. 
Yeah. So really, we weren't making any money, but working our tails off, you know, that's yeah. why we ended up closing. We're like, okay, well, there's got to be something better to do than this after seven years. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, as, I mean, as you know, well, it's the same experience I had with my publishing company. Yes. We were grossing lots of money, but I wasn't getting paid or making any money. Yeah. I everyone else money. was. We yeah. were. <laughs> yeah. And uh, well, and there were times when, you know, I'm stringing my vendors out trying to collect money, like cash flow was always such a challenge in that business. And all my clients were small business owners who were struggling. And, you know, it was like this crazy cycle. And it was so stressful. It created stress in my marriage. I wasn't around for my kids, you know, all the things I said I wanted the most, which was freedom and flexibility and time with my family. My kids were often living in the office with me because I was there till all hours. So I wouldn't go back there. And yet you and I both know that those were like priceless opportunities to learn how to build a business the right way. Oh yeah. I look, I loved the experience. We just didn't know what we were doing, you know? Yeah. And, yeah, um, totally and a lot of it was just the reality of that kind of business. And mm -hmm. so you just take it and people like, they want to have this, okay, I want this path. I want it nice and smooth. And I want to see all the way down to the horizon and whose path is that way. Right. Yeah. So you learn, so you're just going to step out into the stream and you're going to get swept away and you're just going to be okay with it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And um, I, there was something in your said that I wanted to elaborate on about the, the path place. It's about having a plan in place, right? And making sure that that plan is really flexible, like not having anything, don't ever think anything is set in stone. There are so many detours, roadblocks, shifts, things that are in your control, things that are out of your control. So I think that business is like the craziest roadmap ever, but it's still helpful to have a roadmap, right? Even if the roadmap changes constantly, you still need to have some sense of where you're going, both financially, emotionally, spiritually, like there has to be some driver that's moving you forward because otherwise it's too easy to just feel so stuck in place and like you're going nowhere. And um, there's so many, like I said at the beginning of our conversation, there's so many people with big dreams, but big dreams don't happen without inspired action behind them. We can dream all day and as someone who's super creative and has lots of ideas, one of the hardest lessons for me has been to learn to focus in on the ideas that will actually make me money. And they may not be the ideas that I'm most excited about in the moment, but they're the ideas that are the ones that are gonna most resonate and support others in my community. So I think that getting that level of clarity about who you are, what you offer, and where you're going is crucial to building a successful business. So that leads into my question. What do you have to offer our amazing listeners today? Yeah, so we have a super fun quiz that we created called the Creative Business Archetype Quiz. It is designed especially for types, mentors, makers, and mavericks. And the point of the quiz is to help you understand, are you actually building the right business? Is your business model completely borked? right? Do you not even have a business model? And do you understand with every specific business model, there are certain strategies, sales opportunities, and marketing tactics that work? No two businesses are alike and every industry is distinct. distinct. There's no such thing as a business in a box, right? No such thing. Everybody's business is unique, but it's all about discovering if the business you're building is the right business for who you are personally and the type of work that you want to do in the world. And it's super easy to find. They can go to our website, pathtoprofitacademy.com forward slash quiz, pathtoprofitacademy.com forward slash quiz and take our creative business archetype quiz. Awesome. All right, everyone, jump on that like now so you don't forget and get connected to Minette. Obviously, you'd want her to come in and be on your shows or if you've got an event that you're looking for a speaker, you know, go ahead and give her a ring. Um, you can also find out how to connect with her on her website and on Public Speaker Association. She is one of our amazing partnering directors and we loved having her involved in our association. So thank you, Minette, for being on today. Thanks so much for having me, Tanya. As always, it's amazing to connect and to share with your fabulous self. Yay. All righty, everyone. So see you next time. Get connected to Minette. And don't forget, go to publicspeakersassociation.com and get Bye. connected. Bye.